Muhammad Kamaru Zaman, a renowned intellectual, writer and journalist, Senior Assistant Secretary General of Bangladesh Jamaat Islami, popular student leader of 80s. He has obtained his master's degree in mass communications and journalism from Dhaka University. Former news editor of Daily Shangram, editor of Weekly Shonar Bangla, member of National Press Club, lifetime member of Bangla Academy, lifetime member of Dark Shoe. Muhammad Kamaru Zaman was born in 1952. He was just 19 in 1971. Now some allegations have been brought against him which were never heard in last 40 years. The tribunal also showed him arrest in connection with those allegations. Allegations after allegations brought out against him. The appellate division handed down date penalty against Mr. Kamaru Zaman in connection with the third allegation. Let's have a look what has been said in the third allegation and also into the trial procedure of the case. It is stated in the third allegation that on 25th July of 1971 and 10th Rabban of the Bengali calendar at dawn, Muhammad Kamaru Zaman instructed the Pakistani army and auxiliary forces like Al Badr, Razaka to carry mass killing and accordingly Pakistani army and the member of the auxiliary forces cordoned the Shwakpur village and killed 164 villagers and raped the women indiscriminately. The tribunal handed down date penalty against Muhammad Kamaru Zaman in line with this charge and the appellate division also upheld the verdict in a dissenting judgment. Three victim women were produced before the tribunal in connection with the charge. A camera trial was held in the tribunal subsequently where the judges, prosecutors, defense lawyers and Kamaru Zaman were present. Even after producing 10 prosecution witnesses, the prosecution produced three more women as additional witnesses, even they were not included among the least of the prosecution witnesses. In the cross-examination, different witnesses testified in a different way. The self-claimed four victim witnesses also admitted that they came to know Kamaru Zaman after the independence war. Tenth witness Jalaluddin said in his statement that I have seen Kamaru Zaman for several times after 1971. In the subsequent cross-examination, he reaffirmed that after long days of the 1971, I saw Kamaru Zaman in a party meeting near the Banglo at the Shepu town for the first time. Eleventh witness Hassan Banu was asked for how many days she knows the accused who is present in the dock. Replying to such query, she said, following the independence, we heard from our seniors that the accused was a great leader and he doesn't know Kamaru Zaman personally. Just heard about him. Twelfth witness Hafiza Bewa saw Mr. Kamaru Zaman for the first time in the television. In the cross-examination, she admitted that I know Kamaru Zaman since the war of liberation ended. I saw him for the first time in the television. Then why the liabilities of raping her or murdering her husband would go upon Kamaru Zaman? Hafiza Bewa said, I heard the name from the superiors. Who are the superiors is not clear. Is this top process of the government or is it the prosecutor or the investigation officer? Most surprising thing is the 13th witness Korofuli Bewa clearly stated, I didn't know Kamaru Zaman prior to the war. I came to know him later. I first saw him three or four months after the independence. The way of his recognizing Kamaru Zaman was also interesting. She said, I first saw Kamaru Zaman when he was walking in front of my house. But the fact is, Kamaru Zaman's house is situated in Sherpur town, while the house of Korofuli Bawa is situated in the Shohakpur under Nokla Upojela, which is 45 km away from the town.
Eleven witness Hassan Banu said, I often forget within short time. It's a mystery that how can she recall the memory of 43 years? Though this witness could mention a date of Bengali calendar while narrating the crime incident, but surprisingly, she couldn't mention the date in which she had been examined. Eleven witness Hassan Banu father said she even couldn't say her date of marriage or her date of birth. Hassan Banu was also failed to say the date on which she was produced before the tribunal. This witness can't mention the name of any local freedom fighter as well. She categorically admitted that she couldn't say the name of the freedom fighters belonged to Shohakpur. Mysteriously, she only knows Kamaruz Zaman and only Kamaruz Zaman. Thirteenth witness Korofuli Bewa admitted in the tribunal that she has no idea about the date of calendars both in Bengali or English. But surprisingly, she recalled the incident of 43 years back and could remember the date and the month successfully. It indicates she has said the date which she has memorized. In the cross, she also confirmed her incapacity to say the date and time as she stated in the cross that I can say the date of the year of my first or the second marriage. Even I don't know the date when my daughter Mariam was expired. This incident proved that these three women witnesses has testified in the tribunal as they had been tutored and instructed. The date of rape incident also differs. Twelfth witness Hafiza Bewa claimed to be raped in the same date with another victim Korofuli. Hafiza said on that day, 10th Sabon, many women were raped including me, Korofuli Bewa and Shomla Bewa. But 13th witness Korofuli Bewa said, Putting the dead bodies in the car room we left for Nokla. I was raped three days later by the Punjabi men when I returned home and was standing in that car room. Then who is telling the truth? Actually, these inconsistencies are found as the entire story is concocted. While the church order simply referred a single date of 25th July or 10th Shraban, no more date of the incident is mentioned in the church order. Coming to the tribunal, these three witnesses have stated that Kamaru Zaman was present while raping them. But they didn't say that while giving a statement before the investigation officer. Even the charge framing order didn't mention anything specific about the presence of Kamaru Zaman during the crime incident. Another important thing is, neither the prosecution nor the witness could say that when, how and to whom Mr. Kamaru Zaman gave the instruction of mass killing. Thirteen prosecution witness Korofuli Bewa told differently in different times. In the cross, she said once that none asked me to give testimony in this case. I have come with self-effort. Then she again said that Jalal, Tenth prosecution witness had brought me here. Jalal asked me to come here. Three prosecution witnesses were produced in the tribunal to prove this charge. If we read their testimony at a time, then inconsistencies would be clarified. Korofuli Bewa said, Habi came with me, none except Jalal and Habi came with me. While twelfth prosecution witness Hafiza Bewa said, Korofuli Bewa came with me. We came together and now we are staying together. Well, 11 prosecution witness Hassan Banu said, I had asked six women to come to Dhaka and then we came all together. Korofuli Bawa has come. I don't know the name of the rest of these women. After coming to Dhaka, we all are living together. Though Hassan Banu claimed to come in Dhaka with self effort but she can't even tell the court about the bus fare when she has been asked by the defense lawyer. Whom will you believe? They have given contradictory statement as they delivered the testimony as they had been tutored by the prosecution. This is the main reason behind their inconsistency and irrelevant statement. This incident clearly substantiated that the allegations which they have been brought against Kamaru Zaman are entirely false, bogus, concocted and fictitious. Testimony was made under the backing and instruction of the government. Hassan Banu was produced as the prosecution witness as she had been provided many government facilities and privileges. 
She admitted in the cross-examination that we had no land of our own during the Liberation War. My husband was used to cultivate on the land of others. Still, we don't have any land. After the Liberation War, I worked as a housemaid in different houses. Even I had come to Dhaka earlier for same working purpose. Though these three witnesses claimed themselves as a widow, but all of them were get married for second time and now they have kids. Let's see who were truly responsible for the Shohakpur massacre. Arshad Ali, a resident of the Shohakpur village was a defense witness. His father Ikabbar Ali was brutally killed by the Pakistani army on the massacre day. About Shohakpur genocide he said, we settled in that village along with other refugees came from India and manage land properties over there. At that time, local Fochi chairman, Noji master, Kadid doctor and Nosa Gong tried to evacuate us due to previous faction. All of them were collaborators of the Pakistani army. They had influenced the army to make this incident. They had portrayed us as freedom fighter to the Pakistani army. Journalist Mamun Rashid visited the spot in connection with Shohakpur massacre and published a book after collecting the interview of the 15 victim women witnesses. Even the 10th and 13th prosecution witnesses admitted that they had given interview with the journalist. 11 prosecution witness Hassan Banu and 13th witness Korfuli Bewa in their given interview with Mamun Rashid also told nothing about the involvement of Muhammad Kamaru Zaman with the aforesaid rape or mass killing charges. Besides, 138 names of the Razakars were placed in the book where the name of Kamaru Zaman is not found. But coming to the tribunal, they implicated Muhammad Kamaru Zaman with the incident as they had taken facilities and privileges from the government. Government's Obstruction to Produce Defense Witness in the trial procedure of Muhammad Kamaru Zaman, prosecution was allowed to produce 18 witnesses, but the tribunal arbitrarily limited the number of defense witnesses. Defense was given chance to produce only five witnesses to prove their case. The question of the people. If Kamaru Zaman was really involved with the Shohakpur massacre and the rape incident, then the testimonies of all the witnesses would be the same. They would not make any information forgery and no inconsistencies were found. If we scrutinize the aforesaid testimonies, then it would be clear that they have given false statement and on the basis of this wrong statement, the appellate division has handed down death penalty against innocent Muhammad Kamaru Zaman and the government is doing a hurry now to execute him. But the truth will be revealed one day, inshallah. Raise your voice to stop this judicial murder for the sake of humanity and justice.